Hello and Namaskar. I'm Divya, your host, and welcome to today's live session. Thank you for joining our live session. We have with us today Dr. Umesh Sharma from Arizona, USA. He is an internal medicine physician with 16 years of experience focused on hospital-based care in collaboration with medical and surgical specialties as required. He has residency in internal medicine from Bale Medical College of Cornell University at New York. Welcome to today's session, Dr. Sharma. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. Uh, thank you so much for the invite, Divya. Uh, this is a pleasure being here again uh, on eGlobal platform, and thanks for the invite. Yeah. If you're just joining our session, we are going to explore about why vaccination and immunization is important and we'll provide information of that with our doctor, Omesh Sharma. What do you say, doctor? We Shall we dive into the topic? Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, vaccination is really yeah. near and dear to my heart, and especially now with COVID and, and monkeypox and other uh, infections right around the corner. So it's really timely, I think. Okay. So my first question is, what are vaccines and what is immunization or vaccination? Thanks for the question. So immunization is the process of getting vaccines and vaccines is a uh, typically a, a virus or a bacteria or some product that we inject in, in, in people's bodies. So it triggers an immune response. It's like, it's like playing a, a test, like a, like a trial match or a game before the actual game or taking your mock exams before the final exams. So if you, the more practice you do, obviously you're gonna do better in those exams. Or, or your uh, tests or the game. So that's kind of what vaccine does is it, it kind of prepares your body for the real infection should you have it. Uh, that's great. Let me remind you our viewers that we are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. So hop on your favorite social media. We are exploring about vaccination and immunization. So with our Dr. Omesh. So Dr. My second question is, uh, why should someone take vaccines? It's, it's, it's a great question. And, and that has been obviously the challenge with COVID, right? There are people on one side of the fence saying, I don't want to take a vaccine. And people on the other side saying, I want to take the vaccine. So I think personally, I feel vaccines, and as I said earlier, it's like the practice before the real event. In a way, it's like wearing a seatbelt. Like think about it, right? When you wear a seatbelt, God forbid you get an accident, you're less likely to die because you're wearing a seatbelt. It doesn't really prevent accidents, but if you get an accident, you're less likely to die because you had a seatbelt. Similarly, vaccines don't necessarily completely 100% prevent infection, but it prepares you for, for the infection itself. So, you, so you're less likely to get much, much sicker, ending up in the hospital or even dying. So that's pretty much what vaccine does. It prepares your body for any massive infection should you encounter the vaccine, so, so to, the, to the infection, sorry. Oh. It will keep us safe. Correct, yes. Okay, so how does vaccines protect us from disease-causing organisms? So usually what happens is uh, with the vaccines, the when you get an injection or a nasal mist or a pill, usually you get the whole organism or a part of it or sometimes a toxin that the organism produces. And when your body encounters that foreign material, you naturally set up a defense mechanism. It's like on a border, you have people infiltrating the border, your border defense mechanism starts getting an action and starts protecting your body from that invasion. Similarly, when these uh, parts of microbes enter our body, your immunity gets triggered, whether it's in the form of antibodies or cell mediated immunity, the T cells and B cells. So your body gets into overdrive, prepares those uh, defense mechanisms. So in future, when you actually get exposed to the infection itself, you already have the defense mechanism ready to go. And that's how you prevent infections. Uh, that's kind of what vaccines work and how they work in the body. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, E-Global Doctors presents you with different diet programs. You will get two free nutrition assessment and you will get to to talk to expert nutrition coaches regarding your diet and lifestyle. Our nutrition coaches will work for you to understand and resolve the root cause problem. Uh, Dr. Mesh, we talked about the vaccine and like how they help us to prevent the diseases. What is herd immunity? 
So herd immunity is, uh, you probably have heard that word uh, thrown around with COVID or even polio uh, back in the days. So, but the bottom line is when a sufficient number of population is vaccinated, we say they have herd immunity, like a herd of you know, animals. So if the majority of people are vaccinated, you, you, you assume the whole, the whole population is vaccinated. What, how it helps is, uh, think about it, if, if you're in a room with 20 people and none of them have vaccines taken, and if somebody, one person is in the room, there's high chance that everybody who's not vaccinated has no exposure to the infection is not exposed, there's a good chance they all get infected, especially something that infectious like, like COVID. And we've seen that in Delta. But then imagine if those uh, 20 people in the room, 10, 12 are vaccinated, they have some kind of immunity. It's less likely for the infection to spread through those 20 people. And that's kind of how herd immunity, how immunity uh, works. So if the majority of population has some kind of immunization against infection, it's less likely it's gonna spread to the population. And especially it'll prevent the people who are most vulnerable, like the extremes of ages, the younger ones or the older ones, people who are immune suppressed, elderly, multiple medical problems. So usually this is how herd immunity works is, uh, is the general good for the benefit of fear. So basically everybody gets benefited from, from this uh, event. Okay. That's great. Uh, we was, uh, are you interested in contributing to telehealth visits and build your network? Join our family of 350 plus board certified doctors providing 40 plus services in eight plus countries. You will get the benefit. You will get to consult patients from anywhere in the world. Liability insurance will be provided and opportunity to provide charitable service. Uh, Dr. Umesh, uh, so how does like, uh, how long does vaccine protection last? You know, studies have shown like once you get vaccinated, your body does produce those uh, memory B cells and T cells, and they can last for a long time. But depending on the infection, this may not be the case in every pathogen. For example, the classic example is the flu virus, which may mutate on a frequent basis. So even though you had immunity to last year or the year before, it may not necessarily prevent you from the infection coming up. So uh, it's pretty, it's very uh, infection specific, but it does tend to last a long. And for example, in, in infections like polio or smallpox, the antibodies and the immune system really stays triggered for a long time and protects you for, for pretty much your lifetime. Okay, that's why we need regular boosters of flu and COVID. Correct, that's exactly why you need regular boosters of COVID and flu, because A, the virus mutates as we've seen with COVID with all these um, variants and especially flu as well. So it's, it's always good to get at least the annual booster. So you're ready for whatever comes your way that year. Okay. So we talked about vaccine and the importance. So what are the diseases vaccines can prevent? Well, uh, the one thing to understand is while no vaccine provides 100% protection, definitely some vaccines are much, much better than, uh, than others, depending on the pathogen, the, the quality of vaccine and what really protects you against. For example, tetanus, the tetanus toxoid. Usually the tetanus bacteria itself doesn't make you sick, but the toxin that the bacteria produces makes you sick. In a way you get tetany and, and convulsions. So the tetanus toxoid is highly effective against uh, the toxoid produced by the tetanus bacteria. So that's one example. Similarly, smallpox is highly effective. That's probably why we've eradicated smallpox from the world. And we are close to eradicating polio from, from our world as well. Uh, it's, it's unfortunately has shown some, shown some recursions in some areas of the world where people are not uh, so keen on vaccinating themselves. But in general, vaccines, uh, depending on how it's made and what they target, they tend to be pretty effective when taken at the right time. Okay, that means like no, uh, no vaccine guarantees 100% protection, but it helps to prevent the disease. Correct. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's like wearing a seatbelt in your car. So yeah. it doesn't prevent an accident. The seatbelts don't prevent an accident. But if you get in an accident, you're less likely to die because you're wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. Similarly, vaccines likely prevent you from getting super sick or even dying because you have some immunity against the disease. Okay, you talked about uh, how vaccines are made. So I want to ask how are typical vaccines like flu vaccines are made? So the classic example is the flu vaccine. Typically in the, in the, in the old days, we used to uh, make egg-based vaccine where 
you know, you have a candidate viral uh, vector, candidate virus, you inject the virus in the, in the, in the egg and it, multipl it multiplies in the egg. Then you extract the virus, which is concentrated in the egg, purify it based on uh, whether you want to have a live vaccine or attenuated, which is a little uh, less infective viral, virus particles. Sometimes they can isolate the antigens or certain capsids, certain parts of those uh, the viruses and then inject those in, in, in purify and inject in, in human beings. That's the classic egg vaccine. Obviously technology has evolved. Now they use cell cultures. Uh, basically that could be mammalian cells where you inject the viruses in the cells instead of eggs and replicate them in high sufficient number and then extract those and use that as a vaccine. Uh, there's another technological recombinant technology where uh, you, you inject the part of virus with a vector vi vector virus like bacterial virus, you inject those, and this itself is a recombinant technology, and you deliver genetic information in the cells, in the host cells, and that replicates the antigen production and the, the effect of vaccine. And obviously, we've all heard about the mRNA vaccine, uh, which uh, which is obviously that really became famous with a COVID vaccine, where where mRNA is a is a like a messenger which normally our cells send signals. So this, this mRNA goes and produces proteins. So what happens if you inject that mRNA, mRNA itself in covered with lipid particle and stabilize that, inject it directly in say human bodies, your body takes the mRNA signals, it goes to your cells and cells make those proteins that mRNA codes for. And these proteins are obviously the virus particles, nucleocapsid proteins. And, and when, when your body gets that foreign protein, it makes antibodies and, and immunity gets triggered. And that's kind of how the mRNA vaccines uh, work. And it's, it's so far, as far as we know, they tend to be as, as safe as any of the vaccines we know. So uh, I think it's here to stay. I would not be surprised that there'll be much more evolution of those vaccines in the years to come. Okay, that's amazing. So Dr. Amesh, you uh, mentioned about mRNA vaccines. Mm -hmm. So how are these newer vaccines are made? So the mRNA vaccine is typically, uh, you know, they are genetically engineered where you isolate, you know, the signal producing uh, mRNA or, so let me track myself back a little bit. A body has a genetic code in the DNA. So to make proteins from DNA, you have to copy the genetic code on a RNA molecule and the RNA copies the genetic code, it goes to your cells and it starts producing those proteins which are supposed to be what the DNA should be producing. So when your body makes those proteins, that's how typically the mechanism works is DNA gets copied to RNA, which sends a message, it starts transcribing and you get proteins. So depending on the we we, we make gazillion amounts of proteins a day, right? These proteins could be obviously enzymes, for example, or certain biochemical markers and, and stuff like that. So your body makes proteins depending on the signal of the mRNA. If you inject the viral mRNA particle is gonna make that particular part of the virus. And in, in, in the COVID case, it's the capsid antigen. And when that antigen gets produced, you make antibodies. So, so next time when you see the, when the body sees a virus with uh, the typical capsid protein, you already have an antibody that blocks the virus from attacking your cells. So that's typically how mRNA is made and how the mRNA vaccines work. Okay, that's a very uh, good information to know. So uh, Dr. Mish, like children also need vaccines for protection. So when does child immunization start? So usually, uh, you know, typically, whether it's America, India, most countries, you want to start vaccination as early as possible. So here in America, uh, people, you know, as kids are born at birth, they get hepatitis B vaccine. And usually between birth to two months, you start getting the typical diphtheria, polio, tetanus, pneumonia, hepatitis B, second shot, hemophilus. Here we give some other viruses like rotavirus. So I would, I would refer uh, the interested reader, uh, if, if you're interested, CDC has some great guidelines on vaccination along with uh, you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics. There's IDSA, Infectious Disease Society of America. So there are the guidelines based on uh, you know, how and when we vaccinate people, uh, but typically it starts early. That's wonderful. We was our parents traveling to USA and you are worried about their medical needs. Well, eGlobal Doctors has a back. No need of insu uh, medical insurance will be needed 
and consultation of pre-existing health conditions. You can also use health packages consultation for you and your family members. We are giving gold, silver and bronze packages. Primary and second medical opinion consultation you will get. So Dr. Mesh, uh, what is a typical immunization schedule for a person? So usually, you know, it's, it's based on your age. And as I said, you know, it starts early uh, when you're birth, from birth to two months, and then two to three months, then every six to 12. So, so, so the American, so IDSA or American Academy of Pediatrics or uh, CDC, that the classic guidelines, were, were, which is pretty evidence-based and kids have a different schedule uh, than adults. Obviously at a certain age, you add different infections. For example, now here, human papillomavirus is, uh, that, that causes cervical cancer we start adding those vaccines. And obviously, if, you want to, if you're traveling to different countries, you could get disease-specific vaccination. For example, if you go to Africa, typically, you know, get vaccinated against uh, typhoid or yellow fever, uh, dengue, or, and things like that. So um, the, the, the vaccination schedule is separate for kids and adults, but typically starts early. And I would refer, uh, you know, the, to the finer details of those, for those websites. The IDSA, Infectious Disease Society of America, American College of Pediatrics or uh, on CDC website. So they'll have much more detailed schedule. Okay, uh, doctor, we have got one question from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, any vaccine schedule for adults? You know, uh, typically, typically for, you know, any healthy adult who's completed their childhood immunization series. So usually uh, what we typically give is a tetanus toxoid. Uh, usually it comes a DT, diphtheria tetanus combination every 10 years. And uh, depending on your risk category, pneumovax is indicated. You obviously want to get annual flu vaccine. And uh, if you're traveling, you know, a lot of adults travel now for work, travel, leisure, what have you. You, you, you definitely want to get that uh, country-specific vaccination as well. And usually when you, when you are around 65 and older, pneumovax, meningococcal vaccine, as well as uh, varicella zoster is something that's indicated nowadays. So uh, again, our, our, the, the CDC is pretty explicit, self, um, very, they have a detailed explanation of those vaccination schedules. That's great. Uh, viewers, e Global Doctors have partnered with Shiger Pharmacy to deliver medicine to the people of Metro Atlanta local community. Patient information will be shared to Shiger Pharmacy and will be contacted by them. Regarding the prescription and other details like insurance, billing, and repairs, you can visit at uh, visit at eglobaldoctors.com. This service is not available to patients outside of Atlanta at this time. Uh, Dr. Mesh, uh, my next question is, how many vaccines can I get at once? Like, can I get two or three or only one? Yeah. So the, there's, there's really no upper limit of uh, how many vaccines you can get. Uh, the AC, the American College of uh, Pediatrics, basically they, they recommend that all needed vaccines should be administered during one office visit. And, and just because uh, you're getting multiple vaccines, that should not deter you from getting those vaccines. Uh, typically, uh, you know, whether it's live vaccines like MMR, varicella, yellow fever, you can all those be given at the same time, the same visit. If you decide to not give it, then you want to separate by at least at least a month or four weeks. Usually, uh, what's you, you want to keep taking those vaccines as recommended. The only contraindications I see is, you know, if you have a fever or you're not feeling well, you don't want to take those vaccines but because uh, sometimes you get side effects. You don't know if it's, then if you get sick, if you don't know if it's from the vaccine, you got sick or because you were getting sick to begin with. And sometimes if you're sick, it may uh, detract from, from getting appropriate vaccine response. So the only recommendation is if you're feeling sick, stay away from getting vaccination until you really feel, feel better and stronger. That's wonderful. Uh, then what are the side effects of vaccines? Typically, you know, the vaccines are very well studied, uh, even like as late as the mRNA or COVID vaccines. Uh, not sure if you remember uh, when you got a vaccine, they enroll you in this vaccine monitor monitoring program. So any side effects, smaller or, or minor or major, they, they get monitored. So the vaccines are pretty safe nowadays. The typical side effects tend to be, you know, a little bit of fever, myalgia, in injection site, redness, pain, uh, rarely infections, that typically, uh, you know, go away within a day or so. Rarely uh, does some vaccines cause major side effects where your, your immune system gets triggered 
and you may end up getting uh, you know neuropathy and stuff like that but it's very very rare uh, the other thing is to remember if you have allergies to egg you know some of those older vaccines are made made in, made in egg medium that could trigger some allergic response some people uh, have allergies to certain preservatives they use in vaccines so if you've reacted to a vaccine before you may want to switch around and take a different formulation of that vaccine for example you know flu you know in the past you had a flu missed option besides the injection option something to think about but the bottom line is vaccines uh, definitely help i would rather take the vaccine than than be afraid of the side effect and not take it unless you have a genuine reason to not take the vaccine i would highly recommend everybody takes the va- take the vaccine it's it's i think it's the only and probably the best way to protect yourself from from these disease causing organisms okay like for the most part uh, these are minor uh, side effects we have okay. yes okay so uh, my last question is who should not get a vaccine You no know, typically people who had a very severe uh, allergic reaction to the vaccine and and there are some people uh, who unfortunately the body you know doesn't really like whether it's the vaccine itself or the preservative or the, the way things are made so if you had a really severe allergic reaction to a point where you had hives your blood pressure drop you had to get get to the, go to the hospital get you know treatment then definitely that that's something you you want to be very mindful about uh people who have allergies to eggs or some people have religious beliefs uh then that that could be a contraindication sometimes if you're severely immunocompromised your body immune system is really really shut down that's when you do, don't want to take vaccines especially if it's live uh, attenuated virus viral vaccines but in general for the average person there's really not any major contraindication to get those vaccines and and getting the vaccine is much 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 better than not getting the vaccine okay so that means those who have severe allergy to vaccines Correct. they should not yeah that's wonderful doctor so doctor can you sum, uh, give us summarize like what we have discussed about the vaccine and Correct. So I think the the bottom line is you know the, if there's only one thing I want to get across is vaccines is like wearing a seat belt it doesn't prevent you from getting an accident but if you get into an accident you're less likely to die that's exactly what a vaccine does it's like a test practice before the actual event it primes your body and builds up the immune system already so when you get infected your body already has the defense mechanism lined up it protects you from getting much much sicker than you would otherwise there's really not uh, a lot of contraindications and given a chance i would take age appropriate this is specific antibody uh, the vaccines as as per the schedule okay thank you for a wonderful insight and providing information about vaccination uh, okay let me check if we have any questions so dr okay. we have uh, no more questions so we was e global doctor is a one complete healthcare platform solution for all your medical related issues and questions and mazey ki baat ye hai ye hai that you have these services available to you at your fingertips without breaking your bank balance and without driving all in the comfort of the living room thank you so much doctor before ending this session let me remind to our viewers we have variety of featured categories for diet consultation like diabetes remission detox program weight loss child nutrition gut health and reversal of pcos you can register with us today on eglobaldoctors.com and book your appointment to get a proper nutrition coaching thank you dr mesh for providing such a useful information about the why vaccination is important for us uh all the viewers if you need any help or guidance for your health problems you can connect to our dr umesh on eglobaldoctors.com thank you everyone for joining this session so it's a wrap thank you my pleasure